Have you ever wondered why digital 230 volt output modules are commonly used in PLC systems? Or, which key components are necessary for implementing Infineon's SSR chipset solution? Are you also interested in learning how to dimension the key features to optimize the performance of your PLC system? If so, then this video is perfect for you. Over the next few minutes, we will cover all these topics and provide you with a better understanding of how to use Infineon's cutting-edge technology to maximize the efficiency of your PLC system. So, let's dive into the world of digital output modules and explore the advantages of Infineon's SSR chipset solution. In a PLC system used for industrial processes, there is a need to control various loads such as motors, actuators, lamps, and pumps. To handle these complex processes, the PLC system is equipped with several output channels per module. Typically, a module has four or eight output channels, each with a nominal current rating of 2 to 5 amperes. The voltage rating is up to 230 volts. In the past, these output channels were implemented using electromechanical relays, with their limitations and reliability concerns. However, the trend is shifting towards solid-state implementations. These offer greater reliability and flexibility and control for industrial automation needs. Additionally, solid-state implementations offer other advantages such as reduced maintenance costs, lower power consumption, and faster switching speeds. Now let's get to know more about the solid-state relay featuring Infineon's advanced chipset technology. It provides a fully protected digital output stage. The system's core components are Infineon's Smart SSI Solid State Isolator and two CoolMOS S7T MOSFETs with integrated temperature sensor. Note that selecting the optimal device for the system requires several considerations. Both the clamping element and the shunt resistor for overcurrent shutdown must be dimensioned to meet the application's requirements. The buffer capacitor must be sized accordingly and an input resistor can be added to enable the SSR to function within a wide supply voltage range. What are the appropriate MOSFETs for the output stage of this solid-state relay system? This is an important decision, and we should start from there. Let's see what is going to influence it. The chosen device will depend on the maximum power dissipation and current requirements of the SSR. Choosing the correct value of the total RDS on is crucial in this process. This graph represents the power dissipation budget and the matching cool MOS S7 switches according to the desired output current. For multi-channel applications with a low power dissipation budget, the expected RDS on values are typically in the range of 22 to 50 milliamps for a 2 amper output stage and 6 to 12 milliamps for a 5 amper output stage. Moving on to the fast overcurrent shutdown, it is important to properly dimension the shunt resistor. Note that the SSR outputs for SSR applications must comply with the AC15 requirement of standard IEC 6947-5-1. This leads to an overcurrent detection threshold of a minimum of 10 times the nominal current, with an additional factor of square root 2 for the peak value. It is also important to consider the tolerances of the shunt resistor value and tripping voltage threshold. Using these guidelines, we can calculate a minimum tripping threshold of 28.2 amperes for a 2 ampere nominal current output. With the Infineon SSI gate driver's overcurrent detection threshold of 200 millivolts, this results in a 7 milliohm shunt resistor. And when it comes to the selection of the clamping element, as previously mentioned, note that a PLC output module must have the capability to drive a variety of loads, including inductive ones. When driving inductive loads, it is critical to protect the output MOSFETs from the inductive kickback that occurs when switching off the current. This can be achieved by implementing a clamping device in parallel with the MOSFETs. However, it is important to select a clamping device with a minimum breakdown voltage that is higher than the maximum peak voltage during normal operation, otherwise, this could result in high leakage currents during normal operation. Additionally, the maximum clamping voltage must be below the maximum breakdown voltage of the cool MOS S7T switches to ensure effective protection against high voltages. So, to select the right power rating for a clamping device, you need to consider both single pulse power requirements for failure cases and nominal switch-off during normal operation. For this, use the formulas Pmax for failure cases and Pmax NOM for normal operation, with 2 ampere nominal output as an example. 
taking these measures will ensure the protection of the MOSFETs and the overall efficiency of the solid-state relay system. Now let's see more about the control side of the power devices. With the internal clamping element on the input pin of the Infineon SSI gate driver, it supports a wide range of input voltage. For input voltages above the nominal 3.3 volts, an additional resistor is required on the input pin. As many PLC systems use 24 volts as control voltage, we have included a proper input resistor dimensioning example in this case. To ensure fast switching performance of the Infineon SSI gate driver in combination with the CoolMOS S7T, a buffer capacitor is used to enable the fast turn-on feature. Proper dimensioning of the buffer capacitor requires the gate charge and minimum gate voltage of the power device. In an AC configuration of the switching transistor, one switch is in blocking mode while the other is in freewheeling mode. As a result, only one transistor passes the Miller effect. This graph illustrates the typical curve of the gate voltage, or VG, as a function of the gate charge, or QG, for a MOSFET that is switched under a voltage of, for example, two-thirds of the breakdown voltage. The curve represents the gate charge of a MOSFET under zero voltage conditions. Using this information, the minimum required buffer capacitance can be calculated according to the formula. For example, with 222 milliohm cool MOS S7T devices, the minimum required capacitance value would be 68 nanofarads. By following these guidelines, we have effectively dimensioned the key components of a solid state relay for a 2 ampere output with AC15 capabilities. Infineon's cutting-edge technology helps maximize the efficiency of your PLC system. So, in a nutshell, a typical PLC output module features multiple output channels in parallel, with low power dissipation requirements. The nominal current for a typical output channel in a PLC application ranges between 2 to 5 amperes. However, with the AC15 requirement, the short circuit switch-off current must be 10 times higher. When selecting clamping devices and shunt values, it is essential to consider the maximum application currents, considering overload requirements. With the right combination of components, Infineon's advanced solid-state chipset solution can support application-tailored protection measures. As you can see, by keeping these considerations in mind, it is possible to optimize the performance of the solid-state relay system in a typical PLC application. Hopefully, this video was interesting and provided you with some hints on Infineon's cooking recipe for PLC output. If you need additional information, just have a look at our product page at infineon.com/ssr.